The Economy of Ghana Explained Ghana is a country located in Western Africa. Neighboring countries include Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Togo, and Gulf of Guinea. Lake Volta, the largest artificial lake in the world, is located entirely within Ghana. The government system is a presidential republic. The chief of state and the head of government is the president. Ghana has a mixed economic system, which includes some private freedom combined with weak centralized economic planning and government regulation. About three-fifths of the GDP is derived from the services sector. Agriculture contributes almost one-fifth and industry about one-fourth. Ghana is a member of the Economic Community of West African States. Ghana has a population of about 30 million and is known to be a beacon of democracy in Africa. The IMF ranked Ghana amongst Africa's 10 fastest growing economies with an estimated GDP growth of 7.1% in 2019. The country has a youthful population with a median age of 20.7 years. It is strategically located and is marketed to the rest of the world as the gateway to Africa. Before we continue exploring the economy of Ghana, if you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Agriculture Agriculture is an important part of Ghana's economy and contributes roughly 20% of GDP. Ghana's agriculture is predominantly smallholder, traditional, and rain-fed. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, about 60% of all farms in the country are less than 1.2 hectares in size. 25% are between 1.2 and 2.0 hectares, with about 15% above 2.0 hectares. Ghana's farming systems vary across agroecological zones. There are however some features that cut across farmlands throughout the country. The middle belt of the country holds the forest zone, where tree crops like cocoa, oil palm, coffee and rubber flourish. The food crops in this area include maize, plantain, cocoyam, and cassava. Maize, millet, cowpeas, groundnuts, yam, and rice are some of the main crops that are cultivated in the northern parts of Ghana. Currently, there are several government programs that are aimed at changing the narrative of famine as the purview of old, uneducated people. One of these is the Planting for Food and Jobs program, which was designed to promote growth in food production and create jobs across the country. The program is structured around seed provision, fertilizer, extension services, and marketing. The other is the Youth in Agriculture program, which seeks to encourage youth participation in the agricultural sector. This effort seeks to change the negative perception the youth have of agriculture. The Youth in Agriculture program has four components, being crops, livestock and poultry, fishes and agribusiness. The program provides farmers with tractor services as well as subsidized interest-free inputs. Transport Transport in Ghana is accomplished by road, rail, air, and water. Ghana's transportation and communications networks are centered in the southern regions, especially in the areas in which gold, cocoa, and timber are produced. The northern and central areas are connected through a major road system. Road transport is by far the dominant carrier of freight and passengers in Ghana's land transport system. It carries over 95% of all passenger and freight traffic and reaches most communities and is classified under three categories of trunk roads, urban roads, and feeder roads. With respect to this mode of transport, many people prefer to use the public means. Most of the towns and cities in the country can be reached by the use of urban buses, known as trotro or taxis. For interregional transport, bigger buses are normally used. The Ghana Highway Authority, established in 1974, 
is tasked with developing and maintaining the country's trunk road network, totaling 13,367 kilometers, which makes up 33% of Ghana's total road network of 40,186 kilometers. Meanwhile, the rail transport network on the other hand occupies a total rail route length and rail track length of 974 kilometers and 1,300 kilometers respectively, comprising national rail lines that do not go outside of Ghana and the Ghana national border. Ghana Railway Network is limited to South Ghana and the southern part of Ghana within the Greater Accra Region, Central Region, Western Region, Eastern Region, and Ashanti Region of South Ghana. However, there are plans underway that will revamp the operations of the Ghana Railway Corporation and Ghana Railway Company to make it more viable and to attract private sector participation. Concession agreements have been signed by the Ghana Railway Corporation for the development and extension of the Ghana Eastern Rail Line and the rehabilitation of the Ghana Western Rail Line. The major rail routes in Ghana are the Ghana Eastern Rail Line that connects Kumasi to Koforidwa and the Ghana Western Rail Line that connects Kumasi to Sekundi Takoradi, Sunani and Cape Coast. Road transport is less popular than road transport and is primarily used for the transport of freight. And on the air side, small airports, including those located at Takoradi and Sunyani, are used for domestic services, while airports at Tamale in the north, Kumasi in the south center, and Kotoka International Airport at Accra in the south handle both domestic and international flights. Air transport is used predominantly for passengers. While on water transport, most goods entering and leaving the country are carried by sea. There are ports at Takoradi and Tema. Takoradi specializes in exporting oil, gas, manganese and bauxite, while Tema specializes in the export of cocoa beans. Both ports also handle passengers. Tourism Ghana's tourism sector is playing an increasingly important role in the country's development, contributing to both economic growth and job creation. With its welcoming beaches, gorgeous hinterland, rich culture, vibrant cities, diverse wildlife and easy transport, it's no miracle why Ghana is becoming a popular destination. The results of the World Economic Forum's Travel and Tourism Competitive Report 2019 indicate that Ghana has significant opportunity to build competitiveness through history, culture, and abundance of natural sites, raising the country's international profile as a tourism destination. Tourists come to Ghana to enjoy its all-year-round tropical warm climate and its wildlife. Ghana boasts waterfalls such as Kintampo Waterfalls and the largest waterfall in West Africa, the Tagbo Falls. Ghana's pump lined sandy beaches, caves, mountains, rivers, meteorite impact crater. Other attractions include reservoirs and lakes such as Lake Busumtui or Busumtui Meteorite Crater and the largest man-made lake in the world by surface area, Lake Volta. Ghana also has dozens of castles and forts, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, nature reserves, and national parks. It is worth noting that tourism provides a significant source of foreign exchange in Ghana, contributing to the government's tax revenue. The Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture estimated that the sector accounted for 4.9% of GDP in 2018, making it the fourth largest contributor after cocoa, gold, and oil. Tourism supported 602,425 direct and indirect jobs that year, up to 10% compared to 2017, when the sector employed 550,000 people. Entertainment the entertainment industry in Ghana has developed into a multi-billion dollar industry, 
The rapid growth in the industry may be attributed to many factors, but an important factor has been the government's liberation policy, which resulted in the state divesting its holdings in some major institutions and paved the way for more private participation. Private companies brought in more innovation and are more profit-oriented. Areas of show business that have seen tremendous growth are music, film, reality shows, and dance ensembles. The music industry has had some talented artists arise who have gained international recognition, such as Kojo Antwi, Daddy Lumba, and Miss Bell. The same could be said of the film industry, production companies, and record label owners. The music industry in particular has great potential for growth and it has what it takes to become a viable industry. Some highly talented musicians have emerged who have what it takes to become world stars. The music market for Ghana has now spread into the West African sub-region. This makes the industry a lucrative and profitable one. The market is even extending into Europe and the USA. On the other hand, the movie-making industry has expanded quickly. The demand for Ghanaian films is driving more growth in the country. In the past, many viewers preferred to watch Western and Hindi movies, but this preference has really changed. Viewers have started patronizing local films at the expense of foreign films. Through the ingenuity of local actors and producers, Ghanaian actors have joined their counterpart in Nigeria to come out with some wonderful films that have greatly expanded their market share. The quality of the majority of movies coming out of Ghana far exceed that arising out of most other African countries. The year 2017 saw the making of blockbuster and record-breaking Ghanaian movies. Many of them won international awards. Ghanaian movie actors and producers have done a good job in improving the quality of movies. Just like Nigeria has Nollywood, America has Hollywood, India has Bollywood, Ghana also has Black Star Films, formerly Gollywood, which started in the early part of the 1980s. Mining There is history of mining in Ghana that predates the colonial era and is the reason Ghana was known as the Gold Coast. The mining sector plays a vital role in the Ghanaian economy as it attracts more than half of all foreign direct investment and generates more than one-third of all export revenues. The mining industry is the largest tax-paying sector in the country and makes a significant contribution to GDP and employment. The mining sector contributes 37% of export revenues and 19% of all direct tax payments in Ghana. Gold is the most commercially exploited mineral in Ghana, accounting for about 95% of the country's mineral revenue. Today, Ghana is Africa's largest gold producer, having overtaken South Africa in 2019 with 4.8 million ounces in output, compared to South Africa's 4.2 million ounces. Other commercially exploited minerals in Ghana are manganese, bauxite, and diamonds. The country is also endowed with deposits of iron ore, limestone, columbite tantalite, feldspar, quartz, and salt, and there are also minor deposits of ilmenite, magnetite, and rutile. Previously, most of Ghanaian mining production was state-owned, but since the Economic Recovery Program entered the PNDC government in 1983, Ghana has attracted foreign investments and pushed towards privatization and state divestiture. Mineral rights are granted to private parties, giving them the right to mine the minerals in the ground. However, the government of Ghana is entitled to 10% free carried interest in the rights and obligations of the mineral operations, but does not make any financial contribution. The government can, however, obtain further participation in mineral operations upon agreement with the holder. It is important to stress that under the mining laws of Ghana, a foreign investor is not mandated to have a partner to participate in the mining industry as pertains to the oil and gas, gaming and other sectors of the economy. American companies can either engage in joint ventures or operate as a wholly American company. However, the small-scale mining industry is reserved for Ghanaians. 
Some of the major mining companies in Ghana are Newmont Gold Corp, Canadian and Australian. There were also South African companies such as Goldfields and Anglo Gold Ashanti. While the laws of Ghana permit 100% foreign ownership, there is an increasing drive towards local participation, especially in the provision of mine services. Companies wanting to invest must be ready to have strong corporate social responsibility initiatives. Some mining communities and civil society organizations have accused mining communities of profiting from the communities but neglecting the development of infrastructure in the communities. Energy Ghana's power supply sources continue to be from hydroelectricity, thermal fuel by crude oil, natural gas and diesel, solar and imports from Côte d'Ivoire. Ghana also exports power to Togo, Benin and Burkina Faso. Ongoing grid expansions would allow further exports to other neighboring countries in the sub-region. However, the current access to electricity remains at an average of 83%, with 50% of rural residents and 91% of urban residents connected to the electricity grid. Lack of access to reliable power has been identified as a major impediment to economic development in the country. The state is still heavily involved in the energy sector, with state entities having a controlling presence in the entire value chain. At the generation phase, the entire hydroelectricity component is controlled by the Volta River Authority and Bui Power Authority, with VRA also involved in some aspects of thermal generation alongside the independent power producers. State-controlled Ghana Grid Company is still solely responsible for transmission throughout the entire country. The final leg of distribution is mainly controlled by the state-owned entities, Electricity Company of Ghana and Northern Electricity Distribution Company. A private entity, Enclave Power Company, plays a minor role in the distribution chain. In terms of renewable energy, Ghana published a Renewable Energy Master Plan in 2019 with the aim to achieve the following by 2030. That is, 1. To increase the proportion of renewable energy in the national energy generation mix from 42.5 MW in 2015 to 1,363.63 MW. 2. Reduce dependence on biomass as the main fuel for thermal energy applications. 3. Provide renewable energy based on decentralized electrification options in 1,000 off-grid communities. And 4. Promote local content and local participation in the renewable energy industry. However, the total installed renewable energy generation capacity in Ghana in 2020 was projected at 42.6 MW peak. This is made up of 2.5 MW peak VRA solar, 20.0 MW peak BXC solar, 20.0 MW peak Minergy solar, and 0.1 MW Safi Sana. The total projected renewable energy generation is 54.7 gigawatt hours. Manufacturing The manufacturing industry in Ghana accounts for about 24.5% of total GDP. However, Ghana's industrial production is rising at 7.8% rate, giving it the 38th fastest growing industrial production in the world due to government industrialization policies. Ghana's most important manufacturing industries include electronics manufacturing, car manufacturing, electric car manufacturing, automotive manufacturing, light manufacturing, aluminium smelting, food processing, cement, and small commercial shipbuilding. A relatively small glassmaking industry has also developed due to the high-quality sand available from the Takwa mining area. The foreign capital has increased in recent years. Most products are for local consumption and exportation. Other industries include the production of food and beverages, textiles, chemicals and pharmaceuticals, and the processing of metals and wood products. External Trade 
Ghana is very open to foreign trade, which represented 68% of its GDP in 2020. The government of Ghana wants to create an economic environment that facilitates the development of the private sector, thus guaranteeing transparent trade and promoting competitiveness in foreign markets. Ghana mainly exports gold and other ore and gems, oil, cocoa, nuts, wood, fish, and horticultural products. The country mainly imports vehicles, rice, and other food products, cement, oil, medicines, and capital goods. Ghana is a member of the World Trade Organization and of the ECOWAS. It has also signed numerous partnership agreements, including with the EU. The European Union also supports the Ghana Beyond Aid program, aimed at reshaping trade dynamics between the country and developed economies. Customs duties are not high, but they are applied to every imported product. Ghana is using the common external customs tariffs of the ECOWAS. The import of some products such as mercury soap, hazardous waste, or contaminated products is prohibited. Ghana's main clients are China, Switzerland, India, South Africa, and the Netherlands. The Netherlands is its main client for horticultural products. Ghana's main suppliers are China, the United States, the United Kingdom, India, and Belgium. According to the World Trade Organization data, in 2020, Ghana exported goods for a total value of $14.47 billion, while it imported goods with a total value of $12.43 billion. Regarding services, Ghana exported $8.06 billion worth of services, while it imported $10.16 billion worth of services. External Debt by the year 2000, the government of Ghana had borrowed so much that the country was in debt distress. It then subscribed to the Heavily Indebted Poor Countries Initiative of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Consequently, much of the country's external debt of over $4 billion was written off by creditors. By the time the initiative ended in 2006, Ghana's total public debt stock was $780 million. The debt stock has risen by 7,000% to $54 billion, which is 78% of GDP. The current debt-to-GDP ratio is 78%, while the average for developing countries is 60%. Now, how did the debt rise again? After the heavily indebted poor countries initiative ended in 2006, the public debt stock had largely been driven by the continuous accumulation of budget deficits, the currency depreciation, and the off-budget borrowings. Between 2017 and 2019, Ghana's debt stock grew astronomically for some reasons, beyond the normal drivers. First was the country's energy sector debt. This is debt owed to the country's power producers and suppliers. It has been accumulated largely by Ghana's state-owned enterprises that struggle to generate enough internal revenue to pay their loans. In 2021, for instance, the government had so far provided a $3 billion bailout. Second was the financial sector cleanup exercise undertaken by the country's central bank. Between 2017 and 2019, the Bank of Ghana revoked the licenses of some banks, savings and loans, microfinancial institutions, finance houses, and investment institutions due to their insolvency and financial malpractices. The government had to raise another $3 billion in bonds to pay customers of the defunct banks and financial companies. However the case, external debt in Ghana decreased to $28,000 million in the third quarter of 2021, from $28,072.15 million in the second quarter of 2021. Foreign Investment Ghana seen by many investors as the economic gateway to West Africa and one of the region's most stable democracies is jeopardizing its access to international capital markets due to its high level of public indebtedness and limited tax base. 
However, the country has managed to attract a wide range of foreign investors during the past five years, but has now run into a set of economic and political problems, partly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. For instance, Ghana attracted $2.65 billion in foreign direct investment inflows in 2020, the highest amount in West Africa, down from $3.88 billion in 2019 and $2.98 billion in 2018, according to the World Bank. The country's annual FDI inflows averaged between $3.22 billion between 2011 and 2018. During the first six months of 2021, it secured $829.29 million in FDI inflows, including 63 projects in the services sector, valued at $597.63 million, and 24 projects in the manufacturing sector, valued at $98.74 million, according to the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, the country's investment promotion agency. The general trading and building and construction sectors attracted $41.87 million and $22.63 million, respectively. For the first half of 2021, the country's biggest investment partners were Singapore, Australia, India, and the Netherlands. The US and China also made sizable investments. There you have it. That was the economy of Ghana explained. Which other country's economy do you want us to talk about? Please drop it in the comment section below and we will do all to respond to your request. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like and also share it with your friends.